My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, I cordially welcome you for our short reflection for the 25th Sunday of the liturgical year. The word of God in today's liturgy teaches in what does the true greatness consist. According to the teachings of Jesus, one who wants to be great must be the least of all, must be the servant of all. And this concept goes contrary to the understanding of the world. For the world to be great means to have power, to have authority, to have wealth, to be able to influence others, all this. And the worldly <coughs> concept, we make a <coughs> compromise very often, though we know the teachings of Jesus. However, when we come to practical life, reality, we either ignore or try to make a compromise the worldly concept. Now, you know, the common phenomenon we notice in the world today, competition or competitive. The philosophy behind it is that if you want to be successful, if you want to be successful in life, you must be competitive. And in every field we find, and there are two types of competitiveness or competition. One is healthy competition. Healthy competition is altruistic. It aims at the well-being of others, for the good of others. Whereas the unhealthy competition is arising from jealousy, envy, pride, selfishness. And the extent of becoming great or first, even putting them others down or crushing others down. So no matter what happens, I must succeed. I must, be. for this, they <clears throat> forget the morality. So they are concerned with their own well-being, their own success. And this is called unhealthy competition. Now we see <clears throat> in the gospel, Jesus was trying to tell how he is going to be rejected by the elders. He will be humiliated. The sufferings he had to undergo, the passion, the death, and the resurrection. When Jesus speaks about this, the disciples Either they did not understand or they could not accept such a view, such a concept. They were discussing about who is greatest among them, who is the first among them. Jesus, knowing this, he asked them, what are you discussing? They were ashamed to plainly tell. But Jesus understood and then he takes a child in their midst and puts places and then he tells them, he who welcomes one of these little one welcomes me. He who welcomes me welcomes the father who sent me. The meaning is that, you know, for the Jewish concept, children are not counted. They are insignificant. The meaning is that when we welcome the insignificant people who are considered poor, or less powerful, powerless, the marginalized. These kind of people, people don't like to associate. They are discarded. They are outcast of society. But when we are able to see Jesus, because Jesus identifies himself with the poor, the least, the little, the outcast, the downtrodden. When we accept them, when we welcome them, we are welcoming Jesus. By welcoming Jesus and accepting Jesus, we are welcoming and accepting God. And that is what greatness. Because to have this attitude or this disposition requires what is called humility. Only a humble person can accept the poor, the downtrodden, the unwanted and rejected by the society. So when we welcome them and accept them, that is greatness. Because this world cannot understand. Well, we have so many examples how Mother Teresa was doing this thing, going the least, serving the poorest, poor, the outcast. And that is why we can see in the world also a ray of this kind of attitude, positive. But generally speaking, this is not the way of the world. So the way of the world is that to get power, to get position, to be influential. And this we can find in every sphere of life, in politics, in business, in society, different areas, including, unfortunately, even the church, we find this worldly concept of greatness 
has crept in, even among religious, seeking power, seeking position. They want to be great. But that is a contradiction to the Christian way of life. That is contradiction to the teachings of Jesus. Reading, <coughs> we have the second reading. Uh, St. James also speaks of the same thing in a different way. He says, <coughs> in the community where there is disintegration, disunity, disharmony, <coughs> it is because people <coughs> are prejudiced or they are selfish. They have their own ambition, selfish ambitions, selfish motivations. And this is the result of pride and arrogance. And that destroys unity and harmony and peace in the community, in the society. So we need to have the wisdom from above. And that wisdom will enlighten us and enable us to see the true greatness. And that is finding what pleases God, not what pleases others, what pleases God. So in this perspective, we ask for the wisdom from God so that we understand the true greatness as Jesus taught is not only merely understanding the courage to put into practice, not to run after powers, positions, and all such worldly things. This vanish. We forget. We think that it will last forever. They are vanity, as the Bible says, vanity of vanities. All these are passing away. And yet, people are not worried about that. They are concerned with these things. So we need to purify our thoughts, our words and actions and become humble. When we are humble, we are able to accept others, the poor, the needy, the out mar marginalized, and we welcome them. And that's what Jesus says. So let us seek true greatness, greatness in the eyes of God, not greatness in the eyes of the world. And that's what we are called to live and be witnesses of this in our life as Christians, as disciples of Jesus. Thank you. May God bless you.